Every now and then, especially in testing, you may come across a situation where you need to do something on disk. However, sometimes you might not want to actually save that result. And this is where temporary files come in. Operating systems all have their own way of dealing with temporary files, for example, in Linux, Anything in slash temp is considered a temporary file. And of course you can open and work with temporary files in Python as well. However, just using the open built-in with slash temp and in your path is not the most secure way of doing it. I'll leave a few links in the description talking about the security risks in more detail. But thankfully Python provides inbuilt mechanisms to open and work with temporary files a lot more securely. And that is what we're gonna be looking at today. So we're gonna be working with the temp file module today, and I'm gonna be showing you how to open and work with temporary files, as well as how to create temporary directories. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. With all that out of the way, let's get securely creating these temporary files. Because it's part of the standard library, we don't have to import anything, which is quite nice. So we could just do from temp file and today we're going to be looking at named temporary file as well as temporary directory and I'm also going to import from pathlib uh, path as well just to help out some things uh, so we're going to start with name temporary file first and what this does is essentially just creates a file in the right place with a name that's incredibly difficult to guess and then performs all the cleanup operations for you. So you could do with named, ooh, named temporary file, and then we'll take a look at some of the arguments in a bit. Uh, and then we could set that as F. And then here we could just do print F dot name. Uh, and then to kind of show it off, I'm gonna do temp path equals path F dot name. And then we're gonna print temp path dot is file. And then we're also going to do tempath.exists outside of this block. And if we do that, uh, we can see that this is the name of our of our temporary directory. So on Mac, at least, it does it in slash var slash folder slash one underscore, and then comes up with this crazy name slash t, and then this crazy name afterwards. We can see that it is a file because this is returning true. And we can see that after the context manager exits, or after the context, the context block exits, it doesn't exist because name temporary file cleans it up for you. And uh, one of the things that it showed on here was suffix. So if you wanted to say .txt, for example, then you could create a txt file in there. And you'll note in the suffix, you do have to include the dot. If you don't include the dot, it won't do it for you. Uh, so do keep that in mind. There are also a few other options. So you have prefix as well. I don't actually know what prefix um, does. Let me, I guess it would just prefix it, but okay, yeah, it literally just prefixes it. Oh, it changes, it's the prefix temp by default. Let me see if we can, oh my God. Let me see if we can find out. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm not looking at that right now. I think the prefix is temp by default. Uh, and if we get rid of this, so if we make it just T, yeah, there you go. I, yeah, I think the prefix is temp by default. Okay, so that just changes that. Have the suffix, as I say. You can then choose whether to actually delete it or not. So you can set delete equals false. You can put it in a directory, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, you can also give it a new line character, I guess. <laughs> Uh, you can give it an encoding mode, a buffering mode, and you can uh, change the mode that you write to. Uh, by default, it opens in, uh, I think, write plus binary. I think the write plus means it's a, it appends. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but on top of a... Uh, we'll just leave that alert. Uh, on top of that, you can also do with temporary directory. If we set this as D, we could do print D. And then if I do much the same thing as I did here, uh, not like that though. And if we do path D instead, and then is directory, and then we see if it exists afterwards, uh, we get this back. So yeah, it puts it pretty much in the same place, but uh, we get true because it is a dictionary. And then once again, the directory is deleted at the end and it's then false. Uh, if you wanted, you could swap them around. Uh, we'll actually do a separate example, I think. Um, so you could do with temporary directory, uh, 
as D, and then if we used the the multi context block, ooh, uh, name temporary file, and then we'll just set um, D equals D as F. If we then just printed F dot name, uh, we get uh, actually if we print D as well. Uh, we get the directory down here, and then we get a temporary file within our temporary directory. So that is what the deer flag does. You would probably want to create a temporary directory and then create a temporary file within that directory uh, if you were doing that. Again, the directory has a few arguments. So you have the suffix, you have the prefix. You can also put this temporary directory in another directory so you could chain them together. Uh, ignore cleanup errors, which is false. And again, you have your delete um parameter here to say if you don't want to delete it you don't have to though it is heavily recommended that you do these are the two main ones you're likely to use there is temporary file as well but to my knowledge if i just get up the the help uh it doesn't create um like a, a file actually on the disk or at least name temporary file ensures that the file will be on the disk I don't think temporary uh, file comes with that assurance. There are, let's see what else there is. Uh, and I've only used those two in, in the real world. So you have, is it not going to give me a... Uh... <laughs> okay, import temp file and then just do temp file dot. And then you have all these, um, like make, uh, make temp for example is one that's in here. This is also not secure. So it's not recommended you use that. And I imagine these two aren't secure either. And have some gets here. Spooled temporary file. I think that is, is that for streaming data? Specialized to switch from bytes IO to string IO or string IO to real file where it exceeds a certain size or when a file number is needed. Uh, yeah, so that does, I'm not sure where you'd use that, uh, but that's a thing there. And then, yeah, there's not much else in there. But yeah, name file and temporary directory are certainly the two that you would use the most. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I actually had to use both temporary directory and name temporary file uh, recently in the real world. I'm um, having to use a lot of things I've never used before in the real world in the last few weeks, <laughs> to be honest, uh, including descriptors, which is where that video came from. Uh, but this involved testing something in the command line interface, uh, which is notoriously difficult to test. And it actually needed files to exist on disk in order to work. So it was a, uh, a function that made a subprocess call out to Alembic. For those that have never heard of Alembic before, it works well with SQL Alchemy and is essentially a database migrations system. So if you use SQL, uh, SQL, SQL Alchemy for anything, you would probably use Alembic for migrations if you're using it. Uh, and essentially, I just needed to test that that worked because we had an entry point as part of a script. And to test that it worked, I wanted to check that the command line interface was actually being called. And of course, it would need all these other files to work. And so I created a, a PyTest fixture called Alembic INI, which then did all this. <laughs> I did all this for you. And this is where I'm going to show how to actually work with these temporary files as well. Um, so as you can see, we have the pytest.fixture and it was called alembic.ini and it returns an iterator of temporary file wrapper. That is important uh, because that means that any test that uses this fixture will um, have these files available. And then when the test ends, it will pass back into here and then the files will be deleted. So pytest fixtures are really good for that. So we create a temporary directory as D. We create a name temporary file with a suffix of .ini and then we set the alembic config environment variable to that path <laughs> um, just so alembic knows where it is. Uh, you can then uh, set some content. So in this case, we actually had to use a format string. And then you can actually just write to this file as you would. So you can write to temporary files. This ini.flush just sets the, um, the, I'm not I'm not actually sure what you call it, the pointer or the buffer. It sets it back to the start of the file. It is exactly the same as doing this. So just seek to the very start of the file. That's what that does. 
Uh, whether that's a byproduct of something else it does, I'm not sure. Uh, but let's let's see. Or not, because <laughs> I'm not going to get anything useful out of that. And then we have um, just a file called env.py, an empty file that we create within the temporary directory. So this file will also be um, destroyed once the temporary directory is destroyed. And then we yield the name of the file back out so we can pass it as a config parameter. And as I say, when your test is complete, so you might have a test like um, test uh, Alembic, I don't know, test invocation, there you go. And then you have a, the Alembic.ini fixture like that. When this runs, it will create all this. And then when the test ends, so once you know we've asserted that Alembic INI is a thing, the test is over, it comes back into here, it exits this context block, and then all the files are destroyed. So if you do absolutely need to work with files in tests, then this is the way to do it. Ideally, of course, and this is starting to get a little bit off topic, uh, if you're in a test and you need to, to, to like test some file operations, if you can avoid file operations on disk, do. So if you can override, say, path.exists or path.readbytes to just return a, a set value that you do in the code, then do that instead. Uh, but yeah, if you absolutely need to work on disk like I did here, and this is how you do it. Let me know in the comments how you plan to use this in your projects. I'd be interested to know what people are doing. If you want to see all the other ways that Python is awesome, I have a series dedicated to it called Python is Awesome, believe it or not. Uh, that'll be linked in the end cards. But I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.